Welcome to Thriver Talks with Stephanie and Nally. I'm Nally, and today I will be your host for our very first Thriver Talks interview with a very special guest. I have Shantae Lowe with me. She's a four-time Olympian, an Olympic medalist, a speaker whom I had the great opportunity to hear speak yesterday at Instagram, and she's so inspiring. She's an American record holder, a mom of three, an amazing wife, and just an overall resilient person, and she is one hell of a triple negative breast cancer thriver. I'm going to let her tell her story, but also give her tips on resilience because that's why we're here in San Francisco together for our talk on building resilience. And that's what it's about. So if you are feeling like you are on the verge of giving up, this is the person to hear. She will lift you right back up. So without further ado, here is episode 10 of Thriver Talks with Shantae Lowe. Shantae. Hello. Hi, Nally. Thank you for that amazing oh introduction. God, thank you for making time before you head home. Where's home? So I live in Orlando, Florida. Yes. It's a lot colder here in San Francisco than it is at the 80 degree Orlando, Florida. <laughs> and I'm from Montreal, so it's like I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> so crazy. We both had the opportunity to speak at Facebook and Instagram, all about resilience. What was that like for you? It was amazing. It's a dream come true to be able to have the opportunity to have a platform like that and yeah. to share your story and to know that it's impacting people on a greater platform so yes it was amazing and I'm so glad that I was able to do it with you and yeah, hear your story I I'm so honored to have <laughs> shared that stage with you so Shantae BC BC before cancer yes. let's start there was being an Olympian always the dream growing up Absolutely. When I was really? four years old, I watched Flojo. And <laughs> for you who don't know who Flojo is, yeah. she's Florence Griffith Joyner. And she had that long streaming hair and those muscles that were rippling. And when I watched her in the 1988 Olympics, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to be like this lady. And, um, you know, from that point on, from four all the way until I had my first opportunity to try out when I was 20, wow. that was everything I ate, slept, drank was like becoming an Olympian. Wow. And where do you even start? Like, how do you become an Olympian? You start with play. As a child, I played all day. I was like one of those dirty kids that played in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> but I played all day long. I skated. I did ballet, tap, jazz, wow. soccer, basketball, everything. You name it, I did it. Okay, and what is your specialty? So now my specialty mm -hmm. is the high jump. Oh. Um, I have been fortunate enough to have done it higher than any other woman in American history. That's crazy. Yes. So my height is six feet eight and three-fourths inches, and then that's the one where you run and jump backwards over the bar, so without a pole. Oh, my gosh. I was just telling her, I'm like, oh my, my dream now is to see you do that. I really want to see you do yes, that. Yes, yes, that would be great. So which Olympics were you in? Tell me some Olympic stories. Give us the inside scoop. Okay, so I was I actually competed in four Olympic Games. Okay. So my first was my first one was in Athens in 2004. Wow. And then in 2008, I had the honor of going to China uh -huh. and competing in Beijing. Um, 2012, I competed in London, which was great. Oh and then God. most recently, I competed in Rio in 2016. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> then 2020 is coming up. Yes, 2020 is coming up. But then, boom, what happened? Boom, cancer bit me in the boobie. No, <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That's what it felt like. And so, um, you know, I found out that I had breast cancer yeah. in June of 2019. Um, crazy Which is enough, recent. Very recent. So a few months ago. Yeah. Um, I actually found the lump a year before. Oh, wow. I found it and I went to the doctor and I was told because I was healthy, I was oh young, that it was not even breast cancer. I had a mammogram and an ultrasound and they said, no, this is just a lymph node. And so I felt great. You get that great report. Yeah. And I was relieved and I was like, okay, it's a clean bill of health. And I went on about my business. I was told to come back in six years, mm -hmm. but instead of coming back in six years, just something inside of me kept nagging and saying, you know what? You know your body well enough. Why would a lymph node appear out of nowhere and not go away? Wow. So at that point, I went back to the doctor. I went to a female doctor, and she was like, no, I don't like this. I would rather be safe than sorry. As you know, the story goes. A lot of the listeners might know. Then you go into the biopsy. Yep. 
they call you into the office, give you those results, and then, you know, you get in a whirlwind of diagnostic tests and everything. So um, it ended up being triple negative breast cancer. Yeah, that's a, that's another journey yes. on its own. Yeah, mm-hmm. so also a rarer form of breast cancer. Uh-huh. Um, what I have learned is that it's more common among African-American women. Really? And African-American women are 40% more likely to die of breast cancer than their white counterparts. So that's another um, bit of information that I did not know at the time. And with my risk factors being up, Absolutely. Um, I should have been more vigilant and, and known. So that's one of the... Um, parts of awareness that I like to spread about it. And it's so important because that's such a common story when yes. women share their stories, especially young women. Yes. Um, and so many times, me too, like when I gave my um, birth date to book um, my first test, yeah. as soon as I said 1988, they cut me off saying like you have to be 40 yeah. to get a mammogram. But the importance of being your own advocate, yes. right? I think you're a great example for that. And, and yes. that, thank you for sharing that and that part of your story. Yeah, thank you. I just learned. I, You know, there's been years before where I had a clogged milk duct and I was trying to get a mammogram yeah. and they wouldn't let me. And so I knew what things to say. And in the yeah. questionnaire, I kind of skewed it in my favor for them to give me one, even yeah. though I knew they didn't want to. So... I unfortunately had to be misleading in my questionnaire saying I had family members who had breast cancer just oh, so that I can wow. get the get the review. Now I've learned that um, a better way to do it is to tell them to write in your report that they refuse to give you that test. Oh, wow. Okay, so then they'll have, like, no choice. Exactly. Our <laughs> slogan for Thriver Talks is where there's a thriver's will, there's a thriver's way. Yes. Well, that's the thriver's <laughs> way. <laughs> That's why you're a thriver. (laughs) In parenthesis, for those who are still listening, I know you're seven minutes in, and if you're hearing all the clinging, it's because we're in San Francisco. We're staying at the Hyatt Regency, and, you know, again, where there's a thriver's will, there's a thriver's way, and my thriver's will was to interview (laughs) Shantae. So please forgive the clinging and all the noise. I know you guys are not used to that when you listen to our podcast, but at least we're able to share this important story. So now, breast cancer hit. Yes. June 2019, and you were already training for trials. Are you still training? What's what's going? What, how has this diagnosis stopped you in any way? Yeah, so I'm a person who had never had a surgery before or any type of major medical um, problem, and so at that point, after the biopsy, then I had the double mastectomy, mm-hmm. then you know the port placement, the mm-hmm. they take. They took a couple of lymph nodes and then I get thrown into chemotherapy. So with all of these things on the horizon, my thought process was like, I have absolutely no clue how I'm going to still compete for the Olympics, which is a year off. Oh, my gosh. But, um, you know, in me telling you guys that I'm a four time Olympian, one thing I haven't mentioned ah. is that um, I'm as a mother of three. I yeah. also had. Um, a one-year-old, a nursing one-year-old before each of my last three Olympics that I competed on. So it's kind of like I know how to do it in crunch time. And when my oncologist was telling me it's so important not to give up on the goals that you have for your future. Oh, yes. Oh, that's a good oncologist. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, my goal for my future might have been a little bit more lofty lofty than some but my goal was to become an Olympian once more and wow. so you know I just continued to train all the way through chemotherapy Wow! and now that I've finished I rung the bell she <laughs> rang the bell <laughs> <laughs> um, you know I'm still training so it's, it's a little bit more intense now than it was yeah during chemotherapy, but I'm trying to go all the way. I'd like for us to share that because we had some conversations on our Uber rides around San Francisco and you were saying how, yeah, you ring the bell, you think it's over, but it's been actually harder. It's been harder. I've had symptoms come up that were not present during chemotherapy. So at this point in time now, my nails are actually starting to come off. They're actually coming off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's hard, and, and I have swelling that I didn't know that was going to be part of it. And so, um, you know, I don't know how to deal with it, even flying here. Yes. I just, like, I had to go to the hospital before I came here and get the imaging. I didn't even get the results. I just got on the plane. I was like, okay, now you guys know what's going on. So wow. if it's bad enough, you just send me to the emergency room here. But it, it's scary. Yeah. That is so, so scary. I know she, when we met, was in the lobby. She had her mask on. <laughs> she was ready. Nothing was going to stop her. That's why. That's what I mean. When you're resilient and you, you, 
you have that way, you're going to find a way. Absolutely. Right? You got that will, I mean. Because it's just so important to share the mm -hmm. story. And I wanted to meet you. I've been watching you on Instagram. Oh, and so I've been happy. watching your videos. And I just wanted to be able to meet you in person and hug your neck and just. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that means so much. Me too. As soon as uh, Katie from Instagram connected us, I was like, I can't wait to meet this woman. Oh. And so. I'm also happy to have you here because um, this podcast is hosted by Stephanie and I, and we are, um, we, we are, we're not mothers. We don't have kids. Yeah. Well, actually, Stephanie has um, a stepson, which yeah. she's, so she's kind of like learning yep. how to <laughs> play the mother role now. It's yeah. very, she's, it's very new for her, but a lot of thrivers listening do have kids yeah. and these mothers are superheroes to me because like I could barely take care of myself <laughs> going through chemotherapy <laughs> and this woman's like training for the Olympics and has three kids. Yeah. What's that like as a mother and what piece of advice could you give other mothers who um, are going through the diagnosis, going through treatment and also have a dream? Yeah. So when it comes to being a mother, you just have to be kind to yourself. Yeah. And you have to understand that, you know, you might not be able to do all the things that you could do before, but do what you can and cherish those small, meaningful moments. Mm -hmm. And do not be afraid to ask for help. Because as mothers, we're usually the managers of our house. Oh, my gosh, the caretakers. The caretakers. Yes, you're the doctor, the, you know, the chef, the yeah. cleaner. You, you do everything. Yeah. And it's okay to allow other people to help you. And so... You know, whenever you have a diagnosis, there's always people asking what they can do to help. And our first response is, oh, no, nothing. Thank you so much. I've got it. Yeah. As a mother, it's okay to outsource some of your daily tasks so that you could spend that quality time with your kids. Absolutely. And let someone else do the cleaning. Let someone else do the cooking. Let someone else do those other things, the managing of the household, so that you could have those moments with your kids. A lot of people have this misconception when, you know, Thriver talks and being a Thriver and they see me and Steph and we're traveling the world, giving speeches is writing a book and they think that thrivers means you have to do absolutely everything and anything and you're always out there energetic but like I think as a thriver one big definition is it is the hardest part my biggest challenge is asking for help yes so that's a big part of it so it's so nice for you to actually admit that yes as a mother and even as an Olympian yes. you <laughs> ask for help she doesn't do it on her own yeah because I never used to ask for help but there's certain things that only I could do yeah. I am the only one that could hug my daughter the way I hug her and tell mm. her I love her but I'm not the only one that could clean the toilet you know <laughs> <laughs> so I love that. You know, so when you figure out those things that other people could do, don't be afraid to ask them to do it. And if wow, if you don't have the tip. people to do it, then pay someone to do it. So if you need the finances and need to get the help for the actual finances to mm -hmm. have somebody else do it, it's okay. Absolutely. That's a great tip. Find out what you can delegate. Yes. That, that's like being an entrepreneur as well. It's like, okay, as an entrepreneur, you, you can't do everything. everything. You have yeah. to find out what your what your strengths are and then your weaknesses and try to give your weaknesses yes. away. Yes, right? I agree. Hmm, that's so inspiring. <laughs> Thank you for that. Now, I would love at the top of your mind... To give us, just because, you know, at Instagram, we were here to talk about resilience yeah. and, you know, you as an Olympian who just never gave up four times and just you kept on pushing. And the fact that you're even I don't even know how you're doing. I'm watching your videos sometimes and I'm tired just like watching her exercise. <laughs> yeah, she's exactly. <laughs> so at the top of your mind, like three tips, your top three tips, like and concrete tools that you as an athlete but yeah. as a thriver have to bounce back from adversity and think of someone who's just really like at their lowest lowest yes. at their lowest low yeah what can they do so for me the first thing that I did and I heard you talk about it a lot in your talks mm -hmm. is convincing yourself that it is possible yes and so you find those success stories you have to seek those out because when you're at your lowest low it's very easy for those seeds of doubt oh yeah and to creep in and if you allow them to take root then that's going to be what you start to believe so mm -hmm. the first thing that I did when I wanted to become an Olympian is I convinced myself that it was possible yes I looked at other people who were an Olympian and yes. I was like okay you know if they could do it I could do it and so like you know maybe if you have a diagnosis that might be a little trickier a little difficult find someone who beat that diagnosis find the gold medalist yes, in find, that space yes find the BC gold medalist exactly <laughs> 
And, you know, that's the first thing that I did. So for me, that was Flojo, you know. Yeah. She's the one I set my sights on. And then you actually write it down. There's something in saying it, mm -hmm. but there's something else when you put it pen to paper. Yeah. And I wrote down every single time I wanted to be an Olympian, every single time that I wanted to achieve something. And then becoming a breast cancer survivor, I wrote that down too. Hell like, yeah. I will ring the bell. You know, I will beat this diagnosis. And, and so I would say that's the second part. But then the most important part, you know, without action, there's no point in writing down and having a plan. So you, you write it down, make it a plan, and then take action. Exactly. Do the steps. If you say, I want to eat better, then don't have a plate full of chocolate cake and ice cream. Uh -huh. You know, you actually do it. You eat better. And so you, you, you make that plan and you have the action. So those are my three steps. <laughs> Those are really good three <laughs> steps, and I just put her on the spot. She has no pen and paper here, no notes. <laughs> you need to write that book. I know, I know. You're inspiring me to do that. Thank you. Let's get real vulnerable mm -hmm. because, look at this, for those who are just listening and not watching in the video, she's here. She's got her <laughs> Olympic American flag on her. She's, you know, you, you really have that representation of what it means to be strong. Yeah. But I'd like to know, what is Shantae's biggest fear? Yeah. So I think that um, we touched on it a little bit last night is that when a lot of people saw me as this elite athlete, this and put me on this pedestal as, mm -hmm. you know, being strong and the epitome of health and for people to actually see me with this diagnosis to think, wow, I misplaced my my aspirations and yeah. I misplaced my affections in her and to to feel like I was a failure yeah. because of the breast cancer diagnosis like I'm not going to follow her she's unhealthy yeah and so that was the biggest fear of mine where my kids saw me as super woman yeah. and you know I've been wanting to be wonder woman since I was a child and feeling like I was not that was my biggest and deepest fear but you know in thriving yeah I've found a different type of strength that Absolutely. is impacting way more people and I think that that overshadowed that fear oh yeah mm -hmm. so what about Shantae AC and I say AC after cancer but yeah it's tough because <laughs> like you know we're still very much in it yeah. but I guess maybe AT after treatment yeah. what's your biggest like lesson how has Shantae changed yes. from BC to AC so I am a different person. I don't yeah. want to be like the same person or a better version of the old self. Yep. I am a new person. Yeah. Um, I was so, I, I want to say self-centered and not That's in right. a bad way, but in a way where I was very ambitious. And there's such a movement now for self-empowerment. Yeah. It's just like all people talk about self-empowerment, self this, self that. And when you're only looking at yourself, you're not bettering our society as a whole, you 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 live a life without meaning if you're only out for yourself. And yeah. so, you know, I was so ambitious trying to become an Olympian, trying to collect medals to make my country proud of yeah. me, where now my heart is like these women. Like, how could I warn these young women yep. about, you know, what could happen and how to look out for it and how to protect themselves from it. Mm -hmm. And then how do I help the women that are going through it yep. with my story and my vulnerability and maybe things that I've found solutions for, like how could my solutions help them? And so I live for other women now and even men that get breast cancer. I live for everyone else. And that is so fulfilling. You I am different. You are doing <laughs> it. You are doing all that. And I'm so excited to see what else you have in store for us. You've already inspired me. And you are truly the definition of a thriver. I think thrivers are those who, you know, don't want to go back to their normal life. Yeah. A lot of um, women who go through this diagnosis, they, they crave to be their old self. But really, yeah. like, don't fight that. Yeah. It's like you don't want you don't need to go back to your old life. You can have a better, more beautiful, more yes. fulfilling life and also thrivers serve you know serve others and you do that you do that really well and I think Instagram and Facebook <laughs> equipped us with some really good tools they to did. you know spread our stories and our mission even further but I would like to end this interview by asking you what's your definition of a thriver for me 
a thriver is someone who chooses to find the beauty yeah. in this process, allow it to take place, and move forward to help others find that beauty in this process as well. That, to me, is a thriver. <laughs> that is perfect. Oh, my gosh. It's been such an honor to have Shante <laughs> with us. How can people find you? You could find me on Instagram, at Shantae Lowe. I'm also in the works of making a YouTube channel. Yay, please. So. Oh, my God. You would be great. <laughs> I would love to follow you on YouTube. So I'm learning. I'm learning from you. And so that's the, oh, where you can find me now. That is awesome. I'll definitely share everything in our podcast description. All your links will be linked on YouTube, too. Um, thank you so much thank for you. being here. So everyone listening, don't forget to subscribe. Give us a little rating and a review, especially on iTunes. Our mission is to get this podcast to as many thrivers in need. So if you know someone who just has been feeling really low, oh, low. and Shantae Low <laughs> is here to uplift them. So <laughs> do share this specific episode with a thriver in need check out our website www.thethriversguide.com to subscribe to our newsletter and get the latest on where we're at with the thriver's guide which is essentially everything you hear on thriver talks in one book that we hope to bring to you by 2020 so please subscribe and all our handles are there if you want to follow stephanie and i on instagram and everywhere you can find us on social media so don't forget where there is a thriver's will there is a thriver's way we'll see you in the next one bye bye <laughs>